No, God created all that exists, everything seen and unseen, but he didn't create evil. He leaves that up to us. The devil has no existence without our cooperation. He is pathetic without our cooperation. He's defeated. He's bound. It's us who bring him into existence by our own disordered thoughts and actions and words and deeds, our own inability to look beyond ourselves, our own self-absorption, our own justifications. And boy, can we make justifications for hating our enemies. We can certainly make justifications for being angry at our, at our husbands and wives and children and fellow members of church and co-workers. How much more so can we become elaborate and well-spoken in making arguments against those who we disagree with or those who actively seek to oppose us? I know, I know it's not right. Nevertheless, I think those people are beyond any hope. There's nothing good about them. Put a bomb on them. I can't tell you how many times I've heard Christians say that. Put a bomb on them. Such a disconnect. But the God who profess the love and serve is a huge disconnect. It says he shows mercy on all. He loves all. Evil and good. Yes, evil and good. Those who we blame for everything, certainly we can find groups that we like to pick out and blame. This is the reason for all of the evil in the world. These people, those people, this religion.
love and joy and patience and long suffering. There's no power in that. You're not going to control anybody with that. Except yourself. We need to lead by example, and that's what today's gospel is about. So, finally, despite all of your protestations, despite all of your excuses, <laughs> love your enemies. Pray for those who hate our church, Christians throughout the world are undergoing a huge persecution again. And you all know that. We have been from the beginning. There was a short period when there was no persecution. But in fact, the church kind of became persecuted, but that's another story. Now we know that here, turn on your computers or put on a TV set, and you'll see churches, not just the Orthodox churches, other churches, bombed and set fire, people killed, people dying, simply for their faith in Christ. That's it. Renounce Christ to God. I won't. So we see again a rise in martyrs throughout the world. And the hurtful deceit. Nevertheless, the blood of the martyrs is a like a fertilizer for faith. And it's not going to die out. Maybe they'll leave those places. Just as the places where Paul preached the gospel are no longer Christian cities today. Because we have no place. There is not a Constantinople or Rome or even a Moscow that will last a great long that we can call our Holy Land or Jerusalem. Because the Holy Land is eternal because God is within. Holy art thou, O our God, who rests in the saints. It's you. It's me. I'm a little bit confused for the word saints, but we're the ones who are saints, those who are called. The Ecclesia of God, those who are called by God, out of the world, and who are baptized and chrismated and live in His church. Holy art thou, O our God, who rests in the saints. God is within. It's not external to us. The peace that we seek is within. It's not external to us. The light that we need as a lamp to our feet is within. It's not something we can purchase or acquire from ex external sources. It's within. It's your conscience. And I think almost every one of you who would say something like, I don't have any love and I'll never forgive or I can't accept the, the quality or the person of another, in your, in your conscience there's always going to be a pinprick when you say something. What about it? There's always going to be. Maybe you become deaf to it. Maybe you become numb. But it's there. And it's that we need to do. Pray for those who personally wish well to those who wish evil to them. And finally, pray for the salvation of the entire world. As God created it, and as He loves it, as much as He loves it. Amen.